Thank you, Monera. Thank you. We'll just keep it short. Just to let you know, in a previous lifetime, I was a banker. And I must tell you, Zareen, that some of the best people we got in our bank was from yours. <laughs> now you would want to know where it was. my bank was, was Citigroup, even though we said that we were the best. But that was many lifetimes ago. Thank you. And it was a pleasure hearing Mr. Bunsell. I think that was great. Uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. <clears throat> We're talking about the future of India now. And I'll have about 15 minutes. Is that OK, Sanjeev? Which is what you've given me. Let me first tell you what I do so you'll have an idea where I'm coming in from. We were created in 2015 by the government. We are Invest India, the National Investment Promotion and Facilitation Agency of the government. I have four verticals. The first one is investment promotion and facilitation. And the single point of contact for any investor coming into India, we give them a dedicated relationship manager. We help them with all the approvals, their business plan. And even after they set up the business, we are there to take care of it for them and walk the journey with them. Just to put in a small ad on that one, we are just about, what, eight years old, and we've been ranked by the UN and the World Bank as the world's number one investment promotion agency. <laughs> That's just to let you know how fast India is changing. The second part, Startup India. We are the execution arm for Startup India. It's a fascinating story, and I'll mention a little of it as we speak about. From the first day when it was launched to getting even a definition of what a startup was, that's where the team worked, and we made that happen. The third is the Prime Minister Science and Technology Initiative, where all innovation happening outside, we're trying to bring it into the government, be the armed forces or otherwise in agriculture. And all innovation in the system, we are trying to see how fast we can take it into commercialization. And the fourth part is very interesting. It's the digitization of a large part of the government's process, which includes the prime minister's dashboard where he monitors the economy and big projects, to also digitizing the entire investor journey, and I'll touch a little on that. In addition to that, the team also works on some of the other interesting initiatives, for example, making India a tourism destination, making India a wellness destination. More interestingly, which came up just now recently as a project, is making India a film content destination. And the entire Northeast states, to see the development of that, we have a special team, to see Jammu and Kashmir as a special team. By the way, my team is about today 454. We started with three. Average age of the team, if you keep me out of it, is 29. It rises stupendously if you add me to it. But each one is IIT, IIM, Ivy League. They're all banking, finance, investment banking. They've come back globally. Each one in that team has taken a pay cut from 7 to 93% to build a new India. Now with that, let me just step back and share with you what I'm seeing. You've heard a lot about the huge digitization change which is happening in India, and to my mind, that's one of the biggest things which for the first time in our history has created that sense of democratization in India. And that's for all of you who are with us in this hall and outside. Let me start with a sentence. This is the most unprecedented transformation in human history of the free world. The most unprecedented transformation in the history of the free world is what India is going through today. And I know it's a strong statement, and I'll back it up with a few numbers and where my thought is coming from. And I say that both in terms of the scale at which this change is happening and the pace at which this change is happening. But before I that, come to that, let me tell you why this is happening. I believe in that circle of life, you know, that Lion King, Elton John song, I think that's one of my favorite ones. And I think that is our time our circle of life has come in. And I'm not even taking you back to 1750, when a quarter of the world's GDP was from India. What is happening in India today? And guys, just step back. Forget your prejudices for a minute. Just think of it as what is happening as an experiment in human history. For the first time in my history of 5,000 years, all my three pillars of change, which is of every society and any society, social, economic, and political, are going through a rapid transformation all at the same point of time, creating that singularity of that transformation and disruption. Let me start with it. And I, since I told you I work on the set of investors, let me start with you on my numbers of FDI. The total FDI I've received in my history from 1947 
has been about 950 odd billion dollars. 532 of them has come in the past 90 months. 532. Let me tell you more. It's come from 162 countries. It's a global record. Remember, FDI is not just about the dollar coming in. FDI is about trust. FDI is about the world's trust in you, in your future, in your leadership, in your opportunity, in your entrepreneurship, and your ability to partner with them and to deliver on their faith and trust in you. A hundred and sixty-two. And let me tell you, for eight consecutive years from 2015, we set up a new FDI record for ourselves every year. Even in the midst of the lockdown in 2022, the most unprecedented lockdown in human history, you received your highest ever FDI of 83.5 billion dollars, highest ever. Let me tell you the second part of your FDI. It's come across 61 sectors, a name, a global record. The breadth of opportunity which India presents today is unprecedented. No other country in the world has got an FDI across 61 sectors, and that number is increasing. Remember, I told you the most unprecedented transformation. It's just started, and let me tell you the third part to that. To me, which is the most gratifying, it's come in 31 states and union territories of India. The new engine of India, the new growth of India, is bottom up. The new growth of India is inclusive. The new growth of India is not just the seven big cities of this country, but every small little town, which for the first time in my history is a part of my entire growth process, where they can participate and they can partake from it. And let me tell you the other last part of my FDI. Ninety-three percent of that number came in the open route. That means it did not require any special approvals. I remain one of the most open economies on the planet, with the private sector and the global partner having the ability to play a role and partner with me in each and every sector of my economy, be it defence or be it any other. Let me take you to a top block to that. I have a GDP today of 3.5 trillion. Am I right, Zareen? Close to that number. Let me give you the story of my GDP. The first trillion took me 67 years. The second trillion took me eight years. The third trillion took me five years. Are you seeing where I'm progressing? But let me tell you more something more interesting. From 2015 until now, that is what we are nine years. I moved ahead of Russia, Italy, Brazil, France, UK, from number 10 to number five in size of my GDP. I'm knocking at Germany by the end of this year or early next year. I become number four. And before the pandemic, I was the fastest-growing large economy on the planet. And after the pandemic, I am the fastest-growing large economy on the planet. This story, ladies and gentlemen, has just begun. And let me tell you another interesting thing. And Stanley, you would like this one. Two third of my GDP is driven by domestic demand. That is what India's growth model is. Demand is ahead of supply, and market forces are the ones which are driving it. Now let me take you to the second pillar, which is the social pillar. You know, three weeks ago, I became the largest human resource on the planet. You know that, right? Close to about 1.4 trillion uh, billion human resources. Let me tell you more interesting. A billion of those are under the age of 35. My average age is the same as my team at Invest India, 29. I'm the youngest on the planet all the way up to 2070. Just think about it. Now you're seeing what is propelling that engine of growth, and there's a BCG study that every Indian born in 2000 plus would spend about $240,000 in each their lifetime. Multiply that by 1.6 billion. That is what I will be on 15th August 2047. This is the size of my market. 
And guys, this has only just begun. And let me take you to my third pillar, which is politics. And you would agree with me that all these three work together when you talk about a huge manifestation of change which happens in any country. And remember, I was telling you about the circle of life. My last election, 2019, 960 million plus registered voters, of which close to 600 million actually cast their franchise. A million polling booths, repolling in just about 217 of them, only because of inclement weather. The largest celebration and the most complex exercise on the planet is executed to a sigma 6x. But let me tell you what is interesting in that part of my pillar. Of that 600 odd million, which actually cast their franchise, Zareen, close to 90 million of them were first time voters. This first time voter, and see the influence which the first time voter can have on this one. This is aspirational India. Each one of them has the same desire, the same faith, the same ability, and the same aspiration as anyone in Singapore, London, New York. This is the generation which is driving this transformation, and this is the generation which has brought about a central change where good economics today is the center of good politics. That is driving this change. Now let me take you very quickly to a few more points on the scale and pace which I promised to you. You've heard a lot about digitization. Mr. Koshi is here, he's completely disrupting India and the world. We heard Mr. Bunsel what is happening. Let me give you an idea. July 2015 is when the Honorable Prime Minister launched Digital India. We are what, 90 months away from them? 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22 and a half, eight and a half years, 90 months, 100 months. On that day when he launched, my ranking in global ranking on per capita data consumption was 122 or 123. Do you want to take a guess what it was last year? in February. You were number one in the world. You consumed more per capita mobile data than the US and China put together. And let me tell you, there was a mention of that when Mr. Bunsel mentioned last year, 41% of the world's real-time transactions happened in India. 41%. You did 48 billion transactions, China was number two, 18 billion. Stanley, you're doing the Google just to check on that. Please do it and let me know. And I must tell you, we did 48 billion in 2021. In 22 October, we did 8.4. You see the run rate? You see the pace at which this juggernaut is changing. The scale at which it is changing. Let me give you one more instance. Startup India. And that was close to my heart. We launched it on 16 January 2016. The Prime Minister launched it. 84 months. In 84 months, and when we launched it, we had 452 registered startups with us. And I remember when we were just walking down the podium, the press had asked that, when will you think you are a successful startup nation? And I had said, the day an Indian mother is willing to give her daughter in marriage to a young startup. This was about a change of mindset. This was about creating a new movement. In a period of 84 months, you are number three in the world in number of unicorns, you are number two in the world in number of startups, you are number one in the world with new startups adding every day. In fact, in 2021, you added a unicorn every 29 days. In 2022, you added a unicorn every nine days. In the third quarter of last year, you added more unicorns than any other country in the world. The story of startups is not just about the story of a change. The story of startup in India is a story about entrepreneurship. 
It's a story about my new generation, but most importantly, it is the story about the ability to access that amazing opportunity in India. You know, until now, we always remember, I remember when I was in City Group, every year, just to get some more budget and to get some more, those days there used to be huge cross-border exposure risks. I'll take you back to the 80s and 90s. We always used to put up the big India slide and everybody used to tell us, listen, when are we going to see those numbers? The situation today is that because of the amazing digitization in India for the first time, I have the ability to access that opportunity. The first time in human economic history, a brand new company got 100 million new customers in 180 days at a cost per of acquisition per customer of one-fifth of the global average. And let me tell you, the story has just begun. Why? I'm the second largest on the net today. I'm the largest, not yet on the net. And every second, three new people are joining that net in India, two of them from a village. And don't forget, 11% of the world's population lives in my villages. And let me end with the last point which I have to give to you. Every minute, 30 people are moving from a village to a city in India. Every minute. In the next 10 years, I will create a new United States of America. I need to give them housing, I need to give them infrastructure, I need to give them education, I need to give them water, I need to give them everything. This is the opportunity which I'm talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, just 9,000 from days from today, I'll turn 100. 15th August, 2047. I'm an ancient civilization, but I'm one of the youngest democracies on the planet. We often forget that. And on that day, 21% of the world's workforce will be in India. 20% of the world's middle class will be in India. This is the new India, which wants to be with you, partner with you, and walk for your future and for ours. Thank you for giving me this time, Zareen. It's been a pleasure.